Hey there, this is a quick guide to the 2025-2026 VEX IQ Game Manual Mix and Match. In this video, we will go over important details for this year's game and some key differences in this game compared to last year's. If you want to see more videos like this, please check out our channel. I'm going to start off with a quick field overview. And this is the overhead view of the field. Now, this is where the orange pins are going to be starting on the field. This is where the red pins are going to be. This is where the blue pins are going to be. This is where the beans are going to be. This is where the square goals are going to be. This is where the loading zones are going to be. This is where the triangle goals are going to be. This is where the floor goal is going to be. And this is where the standoff goal is going to be. Now, one of the main differences in this year's game compared to the previous games is the introduction of the red and blue teams. The loaders for each team will only be allowed to load their specific team's color pin. The teams will also be standing apart from each other in this game, instead of standing beside each other. Other than that, there's not too much of a difference. In this year's game, we have a few different types of goals. Any type of goal gives a bonus of 10 points for each stack with the base of the same color in it. So red square goals that have a stack with a red base pin will receive a 10 point bonus. A square goal can hold up to one stack. A triangle goal, on the other hand, can hold up to three stacks. A floor goal holds up to four stacks and gives a 10 point bonus for stacks with orange base pins in it. Then you have the standoff goal. Basically, each stack placed on there gives you a bonus of 10 points. So if I place just a regular stack on it, I'll get a 10 point bonus. Unlike the other goals though, if I place this thingy, I get a 30 point bonus due to there technically being three separate stacks. The load zone is where you will load your pins. The color of the load zone determines the color of the loaded pin. Pins have dimensions of 116 millimeters in height and 80 millimeters in diameter. The beams have dimensions of 251 millimeters in length, 124 millimeters in width, and are 50 millimeters tall. There are also starting pins and starting pin supports. Pins of the corresponding color will be put on starting pin supports for robots to take off without having to wait for a match load. Scoring in this year's VEX IQ game is the following. Each connected pin will be worth 1 point. Each connected beam will be worth 10 points. Each 2 color stack receives a 5 point bonus. Each 3 color stack receives a 15 point bonus. Each stack placed in a match goal and or connected to a beam gets a 10 point bonus. Each stack placed on the standoff goal gets a 10 point bonus. Each cleared starting pin gives you two points. Each robot in contact with scoring objects at the end of a match gets two points. So for a scoring object to count as connected, it must not be touching a robot and must be vertically oriented. This means that if a stack falls over, you will not be getting any points for those stacks. For a stack to be considered in a goal, it must be a stack of two pins or higher, not touching a robot, entirely within the center outline that defines the floor goal, or entirely within the square or triangle goal. The final way for a stack to be in a goal is if the stack is connected to the standoff pin. This includes stacks that are connected to the standoff pin through other stacks and beams. If your robot is touching two or more game objects, You'll get two points added to your score, but those game objects are part of a, if those game objects are part of a stack, the stack doesn't count towards your score. Also, for a pin to be cleared on one of these starting pin supports, it must be completely removed, not partially removed or hanging on it, but completely off of it. Now, let's look at some scoring examples. So for the first scoring example in the game manual is this structure, which includes three stacks and a beam. There are four things that can be scored here. First, arc connected pins. In this example, there are six pins that are fully meshed with either another pin or a beam. Each is worth one point, so that's a total of six points. There are also three different three color stacks in the picture. Remember, the beam is a wild card and counts as any color it needs to be. Each of those are worth around 15 points, making for a 45 point bonus, which is huge, and the single largest point addition in any category for this example. Next, the stacks themselves. Three stacks that are connected to beams makes a total of 30 points. And lastly, the beam itself is worth 10 points, which gives you an overall point score of 91 points. 
This also works whenever the structure is upside down. It just needs to be facing in the vertical direction. In this example, you can see that the stack with a blue base pin is only resting on the beam. That means you, that you still get points for six connected pins and a connected beam, but you only get two three-color stacks and two stacks connected to beams. Instead of the 15.3 color bonus, you get a 5.2 color stack bonus for the top stack because it's not actually connected to the beam. The total for this one is 71 points. You can see here that the beam is slightly off on the left side and not connected at all on the right side. That means you don't get the 10 point boat connected beam bonus, only two two color stacks and four connected pins. This makes a total of only 14 points. The fifth example shows that sideways or non-vertical stacks won't count for anything. Though this stack would ordinarily count for 91 points, it is scored as zero because it is not vertical. It'll be interesting to see how robots manage to avoid or fix this. Other than the three connected pins and the 15.3 color stack bonus, this shows the two possible go goal bonuses. 10 points because the bottom pin is orange and on the same color goal, and 10 points because it's on the standoff goal. This makes 38 points, considerably lower than if you manage to use beams. This example is an astonishing 121 points, meaning that this single structure can make up a significant portion of that scoring ceiling that's broken down into 6 points for the connected pins, 10 points for the connected beam, 45 points for the three different three color stacks, 30 points for the matching goal and beam bonus, and 30 for all the stacks that are on the standoff goal. This is a special case that most teams will likely want to avoid. Though this stack would usually score 18 points, it only scores 2 because a robot is in contact with it at the end of a match. All points for the stacks are replaced with a 2 point bonus for any robot touching scoring elements at the end of a match. But that doesn't apply to entire structures, only stacks. Here, only four pins count, but the beam bonus is retained and points are kept for two three-color stacks. The beam bonus also counts for two of the stacks, totaling 66 points. Unless you're touching the beam, in which case it's not really not good, the robot contact transfers to all three stacks, invalidating all of the stacks and leaving you with only two points in a usually 91-point structure. Hopefully that gives you some general insight into how scoring works for mix and match. I'll go over the changes to the safety and general game rules section next. Rule SG4 says that blue pins must be reloaded by blue team loaders and red teams by red team loaders. In this case, an orange pin is somehow knocked out of the field, but it must be reloaded normally by the closest loader and only the closest loader. If scoring objects are connected when they fall off the field, they must be separated before being reloaded. As for preloads, they must be the same color as the robot, contacting exactly one robot and not contacting anything else except for the field. If a team does not show up or isn't there, their preload must be placed in the corresponding load zone. Here's some quick notes for loading. Make sure that when you load, the pin is touching the corresponding beam and that the loader never touches the pin at the same time as the robot, similarly to last year's rapid load rules. It's also important to note that this first score affecting violation of this rule, if accidental, can be treated as a minor violation and a final warning instead of a major violation and a disqualification, which is pretty good news for our teams. Now let me hand it on over to Berkeley, who's gonna take over talking about some other really important things. Here's some information about the robot to keep in mind. Keep in mind that robots must fit within an 11 inch by 20 inch by 15 inch volume. Once the game begins though, robots can breach the 15 inch height limit. Registered teams must have two license plates with their team number written on it on opposing sides of the robot. The license plates must be visible at all times. Robots may only have one brain and six motors. Robots may only be built from the VexIQ product line with some exceptions. For example, aerosol-based cooling is allowed to cool down with motors. This is new this year. Decorations are allowed, but they must be non-functional and don't interfere with scoring. Robots are made up of free subsystems. 
Subsystem 1 includes the mobile robotic base, including wheels, tracks, and any other mechanism that allows the robot to navigate. Subsystem 2 is made up of power and control systems that include a VexIQ legal battery, a VexIQ control system, and associated smart motors. Subsystem 3 includes additional mechanisms and associated smart motors that allow manipulation of scoring objects or navigation of field elements. A robot must have a subsystem 1 and subsystem 2 to be considered a whole robot. Pneumatics may have no more than two air tanks and no more than one air pump. Robot skills challenges are made up of driving skills matches where team's drivers control their robot on the field for one minute and autonomous coding skills matches where the robot operates solely on code for the entire match. Robot and field setup for skills matches is a bit different than for teamwork. For example, the robot must start the robot skills match in contact with the structure of the red triangle goal, and the loader must use the red load zone to load pins. In autonomous skills matches, any team member may serve as a loader. Only red load zones are used in skills matches. Drivers may reset the robot to the legal starting position if they wish to rerun their code during autonomous skills. The student may start the code by pressing a button on the brain or by triggering a sensor. Controllers are not allowed during autonomous skills. Drivers may record a skill stop time if they wish to stop a match early.